I'm Quint. I'm Erin, and this definitely isn't the same day in a different room of my house. That's not, no. we are clearly in a high-end Zen studio. Yes, that's what you're training saying. for. <laughs> exactly what you're training for. <laughs> the lost for a moment. Yes. Yeah, so, now I found. Yay. yay, it's like biblical. Okay. Yeah, there might have been a slight uh, Bernie interrupt us, but that is okay. We are good to go now in these fabulous studios. Ah, secondary studio. It is very cool. Shout out to my mother-in-law, an artist, who shall remain nameless. <laughs> You are unable to support her artwork. Yes. <laughs> it's better that way, really. <laughs> I'm not giving out that information. You love your in-laws. So she loves me, too. <laughs> oh, I'm glad we managed to get on to family relations. First, right out of the box. Well, it actually is a good lead-in. Did we actually introduce ourselves? I can't remember. Maybe. If not... I'm uh, Quint. I'm Aaron. I think. Together we're point. Quint Era. <laughs> Where we <laughs> write books. Yeah. So speaking of family ties and kind of his emotional situations, and that's sort of, I think, the topic today. Maybe we put some sort of notes and I lost them, so we're winging it. But no way. Right? Uh, when you're developing a character, one of the best things you can do that someone once told us long ago was put them into emotionally charged situations. There's a couple things that qualify for that, but we're talking about today is sexual attraction and sexual tension. When you are putting people in a position to be intimate and physical, that is both very vulnerable and very emotional. Emotional? Emotional. It's emotional. TM. It's like air bearable. It's emotional. La-la-la-la-la-la-la. It's a, it's a French pronunciation. I'm totally not the fact. I can't. Yeah. And you put them in these emotional situations and you see what happens. And it's interesting because we were talking about Sam and Cruiser and would they work and how would they work. And it really wasn't after until we saw them intimate that it was like, oh, this is what they're getting. This is what they need. Now, it's not to say that you need to make smut. That's if you want to have at it. Yay, smut. But if you don't want to, you don't have to, but you really should think about them in those situations. How would they act? What are they going to do? What's their weakness? What's their strength? What do they need to learn as things go on? Like Chance needs to learn to just stop. <laughs> it's a lesson. He's never going to learn that lesson. He never quite gets. Yeah. Not like stop, she says no, because that's not his bag. <laughs> but very few people say no to Chance. And I'm not even going to say like, women because men women yeah. grannies uncles like everyone he's chance it's what he does well, the thing is you get people put in these emotionally charged situations and not only is it exploratory but it also shows you what the character is interested in it it paints a, a whole new picture like what makes them tick what do they get off on what kind of match do they need uh, we have what six main characters Yes. There's the four of the team and Emery. We have five of the team and Emery, which is six on the team because Emery is part of the team. Uh, Hello, Emery. How's your self doubt going? She's not team. She's not Mendo. <laughs> when she's team, come out. She's peacing out. Only one that thinks of herself <laughs> not as team. Constant argument. <laughs> Never an argument, darling. Uh, yeah. I'm always right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, but we have six six characters and every one of them is different in bed everyone has different motivations for needing mm -hmm. to get close to someone some are terrified of it emery intimacy she's, equals vulnerability listen, she's not she's fine with sex, sex. <laughs> absolutely she's, fine with sex in fact you can use that to your advantage and often she has she's she's terrified of actually making love like anything that has emotion attached to it genuine emotion beyond feels mm -hmm. she's not okay with it but what she gets out of it is safety security and acceptance and it's really what she needs and that's why her and wolf end up being the match and wolf just needs someone who can a put up with his gigantic ego huge ego and 
someone who's completely willing to let him leave, but can also call him on his bullshit. 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 How's that French accent going? Bullshit. It's a thing. Very nice. Um, and stop him. And she's one of the few people who can. Like, not in bed, but actually get through to him. She's really the only one of the team who can talk to him because she's not going to use fist. Yes, that's Dex's bag. <laughs> yeah. Pow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, yes. and you know, a, a good example of Emory and Wolf and how uh, a sexual situation um, mitigated a high, highly emotional charged situation um, is the opening scene of Devil. And that scene is largely not seen because it's the introduction to these characters and it's not the right place for the level of intimacy that was shown. But Wolf was hellbent on tracking people down and killing them. And Emery was the one that was able to stop him and point out, hey, this isn't going to work. This is much bigger than you think. They're not going to light the fuse and stick around for the fireworks. They're not going to. You're not going to solve this. You're not going to fix what is falling apart. And it completely breaks Wolf in there. And that was an emotionally charged scene that we were not expecting when we wrote it. No, we were expecting like a fight fight. Like yes, yes. We did we not were. expect Wolf to just break. Oh, totally broke. Crumbled to his knees. Talking about a very strong, very masculine alpha male character. And it was completely in character. Because you just took away everything that kind of defines him. And Emery was the one to do it and point it out. And she's also the one to mend him and get him through that. To pick him up and get him moving. Mm -hmm. But it was very interesting to actually play it because how we had imagined it was entirely different than how they went about it. Because what he needed was different than what we thought, which is why even though that scene will probably never be published, and really not for anyone's unless there's a reason to. Like, there's a time and a place for smut, if that's what you want to do. Not that you have to do that. It's not that you don't have to do that. Whatever you want, knock yourself out. But if you're not going to examine those really tightly charged situations through um, intimacy, then you need to do it through family fights, through torture, through illness. Like, there's got to be some conflict you have to put them up against to well, see what's them driving them. uncomfortable. Because you get past, like, anybody can kind of keep things at a surface level. But once you get past that and you make them uncomfortable, you start figuring out what makes these characters tick. Put them in yeah. situations that make you uncomfortable. And like, it's yeah. also why Those you figure out... Money. Yeah, how, but it's also why you figure out how a character works and also how a couple works together. And Cruiser and Sam are a prime example of why a couple works together. And it is largely because they are able to communicate in bed in ways that no two other people really would. Yeah, they have a very, uh, <laughs> in, in, it's, it's a relationship I would hesitate to ever really show because it can be it can be judged in a lot of ways. Oh, but the thing is, it absolutely works for them. What both of them want and need, it makes them better humans. They grow from it. They learn from it. It's it, it's immense to their character character development and growth. Yes. Yes. And this, you gotta. Like, They're both mutually consenting adults. Let them do them. You do you. Have at it. You don't care. You don't need to see it. You don't need to like play it out. If you just really think about your characters in those situations and imagine them reacting differently, and which way yeah. you think really feels legit. And that's with Wolf. We thought for sure we were going to need like to trank him because he was off his nut and. So not at all what happened, and it was so much better than we imagined, yeah. really. And it was it was a beautifully intimate, very vulnerable scene, and perhaps one day it'll get worked into a book, perhaps not. 
um, it kind of exposes the character in uncomfortable ways. Uh, it's not yeah. necessarily bad by any means, but the time and placement of that particular scene would have to be a hundred percent correct. Yeah. So and it's, it's a, not just a scene that you can throw in as a filler. It was a big deal for Wolf too, but it was a big deal for Emery because to really help him and her pathological need to help the people she cares about, which she absolutely hates doing that. She did something I never imagined her do easily, which was admit that she was in love with him. And that kind of blew all of our minds because mm-hmm. I thought that was going to be a big hard ordeal and much well, drama, and it really we wasn't. We had discussed it before. It was that was an admission that took place like a decade later in the timeline. Mm-hmm. And nope, happened much sooner than we ever thought. And it was needed, and it was the right moment, and that was the thing. Unless we had played those scenes out, we would have never, never. discovered it. And never, it's never, huge never. in just the the timeline and the character development arc. Yeah, in that way, she was. It helped emotionally mature her in ways we didn't expect. Because she is emotionally stunted, she's got problems and she's got reasons for them. But she's got that need to help and that deep well of caring and seeing someone she cared so much about being like that and knowing what he needed to hear allowed her to feel it and allowed her to admit it and say it because it was something so perfect and so safe in that moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it it allowed both of them to grow as a couple too. And she's still like, God, love is just idiotic. Yeah, it's like, God, who does well, this? It is. And then, Stupid. and then, what do we do? Like three scenes later, <laughs> not even three scenes later. <laughs> and that's why love is stupid. Yeah. Way too weak. We way destroy too, the whole thing. Way too vulnerable. Way to need things. And once you start needing stuff that you can't control, this world's going to eat you alive. But then, the overarching world more to destroy it. What are you left with? Mm-hmm. How do you survive? All of the feels. Ooh, why would we want any of that? Any of those? You know, I mean, like, but Chance goes into sexually charged situations happily because he's all about feeling good. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, he's not going to feel good unless the person or people he's with are, you know, they are all consenting. That's not his bag. They have to feel good. His feeling good is multiplied immensely by feeding his ego to know that everyone else in that room got to feel amazing too. And why? Because he's magic. He's magic. 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 Yeah. It's like a huge ego thing. Well, when we were figuring out characters for him, uh, he's he's the epitome of a playboy. He's a womanizer. He's a hedonist. Oh, absolutely. He's a he's a hedonist. If it feels good. Looks down good. for it. Tastes good. I but what kind of what kind of female counterpart do you play that off of? And it's somebody that can keep up. There's also somebody uh, who has commitment issues themselves, uh, doesn't want anything, and is perfectly fine with a sketchy background. And like, yeah, I'll drop by when I feel like because you know what? We're both getting feeling good out of this. We're both getting feeling good out of this, and you might actually stand a I, chance of keeping up with me. I've never. You did what? I've never seen that before. <laughs> Well, might All right, have this is interesting. Notes. We can learn some stuff here. I have to Google things. I haven't had to do that. You had to have someone completely secure and almost demanding in their sexuality. Yes. And someone who defined intimacy as sex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and literally, we have put a gun to their heads to get them to admit that they loved each other. Yes. Yes, those two Oops. did not willingly say it at all. No. And I really yeah. thought eventually they would, but no. No, God, no. <laughs> no. This is just funsies. I drop by when I'm in town. And nothing more to it. You're dating the same woman twice. Not it's dating. Never happened. Not dating is an ugly word. That's <laughs> Jackie. Why would I have to date? <laughs> not dating. Oh, God. One of my seven? No. I'm yeah. having sex. Yes. A lot Lots of really of good sex. <laughs> he's really good in bed. He's got good taste in music. And he's fine. And together... Really good. We have some videos. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's good. Yes. But it's the only way you could, It was the only way you could develop any type of intimacy with them. Yeah. Because there was nothing. That's those characters are not going to talk. 
Yes, no. is not going to talk No, they will not talk about anything meaningful. And when she has talk, it'll be blind. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Lion. Mm -hmm. Fletcher need well, Fletcher we haven't really explored much there, but Fletcher's need for is much. I think he needs the intimacy. But he's also got his own reason for being very afraid of that, and it's what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. He is someone you should be a little afraid of. Um, it's not anything to do with anything but his his own problems and demons and he needs someone completely understanding and willing for him and he probably actually needs tactile more than than chance like yeah. chance gets that stimulation everywhere if he's not flying and engaging and having to use all his thought mind yeah. creativity he can start thinking about other things and it becomes unsafe. Mm -hmm. Yes. And why well, what what would happen? Yeah. And that's find that out. It's not good. That's okay, we're upside down. It's mm -hmm. cool. But like I think he needs that tactile physical reminder that a touch can feel good. And he gets someone who just needs uh genuineness. Amelia's big thing is she needs somebody that's genuine. And doesn't give and a that, shit about anything past that. And that's a character. So Sam and Cruiser, we had to figure out how to, because Cruiser is kind of a canon character in our world. And when we brought Sam in, we weren't really sure if she was going to stick around or not. So we created her to kind of meet what Cruiser needed and to see if it would even work. It was really to find out what Cruiser was looking for and yeah. how we get him, mm -hmm. would he get matched up with someone? Is it a guy? Is it a dude? Is it a girl? Like, what are we what are we looking for right. in him? And lo and behold, it was Sam. Yeah, yeah. And to do that, you know, he has his own idiosyncrasies that manifest himself largely in the bedroom that we needed somebody to, to match up with. Um, Amelia and Fletcher, they don't necessarily have the hangups that needed um, so much bedroom development as they just need genuine intimacy. Amelia needs somebody who is genuine and that she can trust. And that is probably her biggest thing. Um, and not so much that she doesn't have hangups in the bedroom that she needs to work over. She has emotional hangups uh, just on a on a casual Every day, this is life of trusting somebody. These are the mistakes that kids make when they have too much money, too much time, mm -hmm. too little supervision, too much clout, too yes. much, and not a, not anyone to really believe in them past what they can get or do for other people or past fame and that. She and the one thing about Fletcher is that he is loyal to a fault. If he, you're in on his side, he will do anything for you. He'll die for you. Absolutely never think twice about it. Uh, and, and Amelia's had a, a complete lack of loyalty. Lack of She's loyalty. had people that are loyal to the highest bidder or to what you can do for them in the moment. And as soon as your worth is done, you're out. Yeah, as soon as you're not like the top of the top and you, you get canceled, you're fucking done. Yeah. Your poison, you can go away now. I've got to worry about my subscribers kind of thing. But Fletcher doesn't give a shit about any of that. You were nice to him. You were good for him. That's cool. That's what he's going to be back. And he also, uh, and I think and part of his own mental illness and problems, this way. part of his own mental illness and problems helps him really, He's very, very observant of student uh, study of people. Don't mind me while I move furniture in the video. That could help, but I'm just gonna watch. We can edit that out later. Is it stuck on the run? A little bit. Yeah. Um, his main thing is like, he, excuse me, Mr. Plant. We're gonna go back here. He's a lot more up front. He understands just on a deep personal level he he sees exactly what Amelia is and he thinks she's amazing and he's never shy about saying that and when he's like no your photos are fantastic absolutely 100% means it and when he says 
you look beautiful and she's got a hoodie on and she's at the beach with no makeup and her LA friends would die if they ever saw that. <laughs> he means she's the most beautiful thing he's ever seen at that point. There's no subterfuge in that. No. He well, and that's the great thing about Fletcher is and that's honest. the great thing actually about Fletcher and Chance, because those two are a couple in their own sense. Um yes. they have a bromance going on like nobody's Our business. Bromance. But Chance can't tell the truth can't and Fletcher tell the can't truth lie. To save his life and Fletcher cannot lie. Like everything that comes out of Fletcher's mouth is genuine and truthful. And that's where they balance each other out, but that's also what um, Amelia needs is that genuineness. Like there's never going to be a time where she thinks that there's some sort of duplicity going on with Fletcher. He is what he is. And take it or leave it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't change it. All the meds in the world aren't really changing. I can just kind of keep him feel on some yeah. level. Fletcher's a he's a ride or die kind of guy. Fly or die. <laughs> Fly or die. There is no in between. <laughs> Off or on. All in. Mm -hmm. Or not. No. Nope. Yes. And if you're running with him, you better be prepared to run because there's going to be some insanity. Chance runs well. anyway. <laughs> Chance, Chance can't help but run. Chance he's runs. He's hardwired to run. Gonna run. He's got golden retriever in him. No, oh. he does not. He does not come back. There's no retriever. <laughs> he's gone. He's got the golden retriever's eye train. <laughs> Where did they go with that? No, they just left with him. Okay. He's got a golden gold. retriever, but he's like, gold? Where? He's got like the Greyhound thing going on. <laughs> By the time he stopped, he's run so far, he doesn't know where the hell he's at. <laughs> Keeps going. Yeah. So, like I said, it, it can seem uncomfortable and a weird topic. And if you are uncomfortable with it, like you're young, you're just not old and not comfortable, whatever, take it into a different emotionally charged topic. Make it a fight. What what's gonna happen to make your character physically get to a fight or or yell or stand up or say enough is enough? Oh, Cruiser can just be awake. Yeah, breathing. He just likes to fight. So why would you do that? Why wouldn't I do that? <laughs> why wouldn't I? That's my job. <laughs> I asked you to talk to him. Talk. Talk. Not, not insult his mother. Let's Start fight. a barroom brawl. Let's say punch him. I said talk to him. <laughs> Every, every time how I talk. <laughs> every time I reread that scene, I'm like, clearly she meant start a fight. It's weird because she said talk. Yeah. If I wanted you to hit him with the chair, I would have said, hey, go hit that guy with the chair. It takes the fun out of it. Does it? Because I'm pretty yeah. sure you'd probably still enjoy Something hitting somebody with yes. the chair. <laughs> yeah. Because communication is something you don't do well. It's something more in more involved than say grunt. Oof, the yes. lights. Oof, the glory. <laughs> Snatchy. Pretty much it. <laughs> Pretty much it. Yeah. And Emery's got 17 different layers of that one word. Mm -hmm. All of them implying something different, thereby causing a ripple effect. But the key is to peel those layers back and find out beyond what she wants to present to the world, like what is Emery's character? And on one hand, we did, we've done that with, with sex. And on the other hand, we've also done that with emotionally charged situations that she can't run from. And to do that, you kind of have to trap her. Like, okay, mm -hmm, yes. she can run, but to do that, she would lose more than she's willing to lose. So she has to make the decision to actually stay in that situation. Runs until she's got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere else she can go to get what she needs. Yes, and then she is forced to accept. Because love is stupid. Stupid. She's already accepted that. Yes, stupid. Yes. But Idiotic. she needs him. God. Nah, that is well, a like, little toxic dynamic. Yes, yes it does. Wolf gets to work on later. Well, so does she. They're both very unhealthy in... in balancing kind of ways yeah. and yet the scales kind of tip every once in a while and they well, have to they're all like unhealthy in ways just like humans oh, there's all yes. like flaws but the, the trick is getting rid of people who can balance those flaws and then more importantly help them develop into more secular well-rounded characters yes so they're not just fucking cardboard cutouts they're goddamn perfect and boring as well 
Well, and you see that, like, our characters start off very, um, almost, almost two-dimensional, like, you know, they each have a little... They're very, they're right. very team-centric. The only balance they have is with the team, but as we develop them and we develop the characters grow and then their relationships grow, they begin to have balance outside of the team. So they start. But that growth and development outside actually makes them even a better team because they have a network outside of just yeah. the four or five of them. Six, four of them, five of them, how many are there? There's six if Emory wants to be included. <laughs> And Emory yeah. has self-esteem problems. She's happy as Aspen. She will just never admit it. Massively riddled with insecurity. Oh, she's got like all of the insecurities. She's got the anxiety to a billion. Yeah. With them, with her own reason. I mean, she's got unchecked PTSD. But eventually, she does get some help from that. And that's that's the important thing. And eventually, at one point, they all learn they can all go for help. There's no shame in it. Most people are wondering, like, oh, why didn't you do this? You won't do that. We're here for you. But yeah. that's where that development and growth comes from. But to do that, you got to make them uncomfortable. Yes. And in our setting, like, our world is very much uh, action-adventure commandos. They have enemies. Um, they wind up in very physical situations with bad guys. So our go-to ways of character exploration have become sex and torture. Well, torture or you know, physical physical restraints, like physical pain, physical problems, physical limitations. Not necessarily like torture, like just even well, uh, they're not, we're Cruiser not. and Emery stuck in the desert. It wasn't necessarily torture, but it was a Ask whole him. lot of more physical discomfort. It really was. I mean, that's, that's totally. But, like, if you don't have that opportunity, you drink was... pickle water. It was all damn good. She got the water that wasn't his fault. Oh, well, if he hadn't punched the guy, <laughs> you know, gone back to talk to them, this would have really not been an issue. She would have had fun over all those motorcycles. But I, if you don't have those opportunities, then that's where you can bring them in with intimacy. You can bring them in. And you're. Character, someone who's working for a, a crappy boss and can't figure out how to stand up to them, can't figure out how to better their situation, put them in somewhere uncomfortable. Yeah. Now you, that that well, boss is making out, accusations and figure how, out how to make that character uncomfortable, want to stand up for themselves and overcome that discomfort for the betterment of themselves and probably the rest of the employees too. What's it take to push your character past one thing? Then try it. And watch them make fools of you. Yes. Because you would probably be surprised. Yeah. We should probably wrap this up now, though. Hey, good job. All right, that's all we got. Yeah, for this second. For this second. We'll see you next week.